if you were arrested for a crime and had your mugshot taken, unfortunately, the chances are it's probably on the internet somewhere. And that can be a very big problem for many people if you're applying for jobs, applying for housing, trying to get into a relationship with somebody and they see your mugshot, that can cause pretty devastating repercussions for you. So today, we're talking about how to remove your mugshot from the internet after a criminal arrest. My name is Robert Gruler. I am a criminal defense attorney. We've helped thousands of people facing criminal charges. We have some experience in this area also. So today I want to tell you about four different things that can happen when you have a mugshot on the internet. And we're going to run through them uh, fairly quickly, but it, it also in depth. So I'm going to share with you a demand letter that we have used successfully in the past that's going to be available for you for free. I'm going to explain how to use it and then provide you with a link. So if you are not a regular of this channel, hit the subscribe button. That way you can throw our channel in your channel list. If you have to get pulled away from this video while you're watching it, you know where to come back. It's going to be a great decision. You're going to get a lot of information here today. So the four different ways that a mugshot can go away. Some is, is very easy. Some are very easy. Some are uh, require a little bit of work. So real quickly, here's what they look like. One, mugshots can be removed automatically. They can be removed after a case dismissal. They can be removed after you send over a demand letter, or they can be removed by a suppression campaign. So today we're gonna to talk about all four of those. But before we do, before we dive into that, I wanna share with you a little bit about where they come from. So how do these mugshots even get on the internet? And it's kind of a complicated process. So it's important you understand that way you know what method, what tactics are gonna be best to remove them. So first and foremost, let me give you an example from Arizona. This comes from our Maricopa County Sheriff's Office uh, website. They have a, an entire webpage dedicated to posting people's mugshots. So this is a local public government website and you can see here, they've got different mugshots from different people who were arrested. So this all goes on a public site. Then we have these private third-party websites like mugshots.com, rapsheets.org, arrest.org. There's literally hundreds of them that have bots. And these bots will literally crawl these different websites. They know where the mugshots are. So they crawl them and they scrape all of this data. They pull it all off of the government website and they put it back on their website. And so now what that means is if you want it removed, you've got to go through each one of these individually or address which ones actually are hosting your data and start pulling them down. The problem here is that many of these websites are part of different networks. So one owner, one operator will own 10 different mugshot websites and they'll post them on all of them. So what was originally happening was the these mugshot websites would charge you to remove them. So they would say for $500, we'll take your mugshot down. People were paying that and they didn't realize that once they paid one, it would just go up on another one. So they'd have to go and find the other one and pull it off there and then pull it off there. So people were spending thousands and thousands of dollars trying to play a game called the whack-a-mole. And so they were just knocking them down one at a time, trying to take them down, trying to clear their record up, not knowing that many of these operators were just kind of were, were playing them essentially. They were, they were just moving their data from one to another. So what ended up happening is a lot of different states and a lot of different governors and, and governments started to hear people and they started to say this was being very exploitative. And now the goal is to pass laws to make these go away. And so Arizona is one of the states that has passed laws. I know a, no a number of other states, states like Florida and some other places, are uh, have already passed legislation or they are in the process of passing legislation so by and large we're seeing some some positive trends in the right direction when it comes to mugshot removal so here's kind of a little bit of an update we've got most states have pending or actual legislation you're going to want to check your statutes the way that the statutes work are they're actually sort of uh, pre preventing these different operators from making any money off of the website. So the first thing you wanna make sure you do is do not pay to have your mugshot removed. Some of them are still asking for money. You do not need to pay anything. Do not pay them because all they're gonna do is take your money and they may remove it off that one site, but now they know that you are a sucker and you're gonna be willing to pay this money. So they're just gonna post it elsewhere and then when you find it, they're gonna ask you for more money. So you don't have to pay. Many of the statutes make it very specifically illegal to, to have to pay to remove them. And I'm gonna cover the Arizona statute and show you how it works here in a second. The other thing is that laws also, unfortunately, provide some exclusions that are being taken advantage of 
by these different mugshot operators. So I want to show you how that works so you have a little bit of, of a better understanding where some of our resources are. So I am a criminal defense lawyer. We've, we, we look to statutes, we look to the law, and in this case, we want to look to Arizona Revised Statutes 44-7902B. And here's what it says. Now, a lot of your different, I don't want you to read all of this text. I'm going to run through it quickly. It's a lot of text. Uh, a lot of it is sort of clunky, bulky legal language, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but I'm going to break it down for you. But my point is the, the sort of the structure should be similar in a number of different other jurisdictions. A lot of these statutes are written off of the same more or less template and they function more or less the same way. This just happens to be Arizona's law. So it says here, a mugshot website operator may not use criminal justice records, and criminal justice records is defined as including mugshots or names, addresses, and so on and so forth for the purpose of soliciting business for pecuniary gain. So that means they can't make any money off of it. There is an exclusion we're going to get to here shortly, but that's the, the the nuts and bolts of it. Okay, They can't use a mugshot. They can't use a criminal justice record. So the data from your arrest record to make money, they can't use it to solicit business. They can't use it to 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 profit. What we're going to see here is that the penalties in Arizona are pretty severe. So if they are actually violating this, the law has some pretty good teeth. Arizona is pretty, pretty strict on this. And here's what we've got. So we look back to 447902D, and it says that if they keep those mugshots up, it's $100 per day during the first 30 days. $100 per day for the first 30 days. It goes up to $200 for the next 30 days, and then $500 for each day thereafter. So if you've got a website that has your mugshot on there for a very, very long period of time, the law is prescribing some pretty serious penalties. You could theoretically charge thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm going to show you a letter that we worked on that uh, the, the bill was sort of up to $12,000 pretty quickly. So it's important to understand that this law provides these remedies, but are you actually going to get paid for a violation of this? It's very unlikely that that's going to happen. Many of these website operators are layered in different, uh, hiding their assets. They've got all of their tracks very, you know, covered very in depth. I've gone through a lot of work to track a lot of these people down and kind of peel back the layers of the onion, but they're pretty well insulated. I'm not licensed to practice law in a lot of these other states where they're operating. They are some of them offshores, and so they've got different, you know, kind of layers of, uh, of protection built in. But the point is, is if you can breach that sort of a shield that they have, they can be on the hook for a lot of money and we can use that to our advantage. We can say they are racking up a significant amount of bills and, and the bill is going to become due at some point. So that's some leverage that we can use. And I want to uh, walk you through that, how that works. Arizona has a section, unfortunately, that says that none of this stuff applies to any websites that are in existence for the purpose of disseminating the news. So when we stick to the same statute, 447902E, this article does not apply to any act performed for the purpose of disseminating news to the public. So you can see here that is sort of a big, uh, a big gap in the statute. And a lot of these website operators are driving a truck through there. But I'm going to also give you some additional strategies, some things that we can do to still come out on top, to still win this game. So the first one that we talked about, I said there was going to be four things that we can consider to help you remove your mugshot off of the internet. Number one, sometimes mugshots are just deleted with time. They may just fall off. I'm going to show you an example in the next slide from Arizona, but sometimes they just fall right off the list, meaning no other website is coming in and scraping that data off. So if you see it on one government website, and it hasn't been pulled by one of these bot zombie networks of mugshot websites, it may just go away, meaning it may just it may fall off after 15 days. Arizona, it's usually about three to four days. So we've got 15 pages of mugshots, and they just fall off the list after about three to four days. So let me show you an example of how that works. Let's go back over to the mugshot website. It looks like this. So you can see here, here's a couple of different people who were arrested. I've blocked out everything, of course, because we don't want to contribute to the problem. But you can see I took this screenshot on, I think it was about four days before this. So on April 24th is about when I took this screenshot. And you can see here, we're at the end of the line. We're on page 15. So as soon as a few more people get arrested, 
these two people are going to get bumped off of the page. Once new people come in onto page one, all of these people are going to jump over to page 16 and there is no page 16 that's accessible by the public. So it's going to then go away, meaning it's going to fall off. Now, when Google starts crawling these different websites and indexing them to provide search results, they're not going to see those anymore. So just as a matter of time, just waiting it out three to four days, sometimes a week, depending on whatever uh, you know city you're in or state or whatever municipality is posting these, they may just fall off, meaning you don't need a lawyer, you don't need to do anything else except just wait. So that would be obviously ideal. The problem comes into play when a lot of these different mugshot website providers uh, scrape this data up before it goes away. Because if they crawl it and they index it and they, they add it to their own site, then now we got to deal with their site, not the public site. So I've dealt with a number of these different website operators. Uh, some of them are difficult. Some of them are not difficult. One of them that, I, that I've uh, worked with, actually several of them, have a policy that if your case is going to be dismissed or uh, expunged or sealed or anything like that, they will remove it. So if on the first hand, if you are waiting for it to go off and you think that it, that it maybe just it's going to drop off after a certain period of time and it doesn't, maybe it did get picked up by a website operator that has a policy to remove them upon successfully resolving your case in a satisfactory manner, meaning it gets dismissed or it gets sealed or you get an expungement. If that is your situation, if your case is old or if you're expecting a dismissal, you may be able to just send one of these mugshot website operators an email with uh, proof that your case has been resolved and they may voluntarily remove it. So here's an example of one that I was in communication with. This one was rapsheets.org. With that being said, we do have a policy to remove those records that have been sealed or expunged. So we were talking about a case that was still active. This person was saying, we're not gonna remove it until it is expunged or removed. Of course, this person hired us for a criminal case and we have uh, total faith in our legal team that we are going to get it uh, ultimately dismissed. And at that point in time, we can reach back out to them and say, look, on this one, it has been successfully removed. You said you had a policy, so go ahead and remove it. So this is sort of just a simple negotiations. Now, I do not like dealing with these people, but if they're going to help us serve our clients, we'll deal with them. Then we're going to, if they're willing to go ahead and remove it, great. We can have a, a conversation with them. Uh, this website has since shifted. So you can see here it was rapsheets.org and it has now become, uh, I think, rapsheets with a Z. Dot com. So it's kind of that whack-a-mole game. One goes down, another one comes up. And so you just kind of have to stay on top of that. But if you have a dismissal case, if you have a uh, an expungement or a sealed case, it may be worth just sending that over, sending an email over to them with proof of that and asking them to remove it. They have no obligation to remove it. Uh, under uh, they, they do under the law, but they are probably you know not going to remove it just because you're a nice person. They say they have a policy and they want to stick to the policy. So if that doesn't work, so now let's say you're in a position where your case has not been dismissed or we're not anticipating that it's going to be dismissed. Not every criminal case that we work on gets dismissed. Many of them are resolved through reductions and negotiated resolutions, something to put our uh, the people that we're helping in a much better position, but ultimately it's not a dismissal. So what are we supposed to do in those circumstances? Well, what we've had success with in the past is filing what's called a demand letter. So part of the reason why I went through the law in Arizona is so you understand what we can do. We can send a letter and we can reference the law and we can say, we believe that you're in full violation of the law. And as a result of that, you have a mugshot up that is accruing penalties every single day that it's up for the first 30 days, hundred dollars, the second 30 days, $200, the, the next 30 days, $500 a day. So we're demanding that you remove the mugshot Otherwise, we're going to have to have a conversation with our client about filing a civil lawsuit against you. Obviously, it makes more sense for them to do it the longer you keep the mugshot on there. So if you're accruing $500 a day for six months, you've got a really thick bill of damages. And what you want to do is send the demand letter early. So you mark it. You say, you're on notice. I know about the mugshot. I know that this exists. At this current time, it's only been 60 days, and so you owe X amount of money for your violation of the law. But if you keep holding it on there, we're going to mark this day, the date that we sent this letter, as a stake in the ground, and we're going to continue to collect fees. We're, the, the interest is going to accrue. We're going to continue to monitor this, and your bill is going to be 
tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars if you do not remove it. So you can create some incentive, you can create some leverage there. And sometimes these, these uh, mugshot operators We'll just pull them down immediately. You don't even have to do anything. You don't have to file civil lawsuits or go into that realm. Just the threat alone of that sort of really expensive financial bill is enough to have them pull it down. So I want to show you what the letter looks like. I want to run you through how it works. And then I'm going to give you a copy of it at the end of this video. We're going to link to a couple places where you can just go get it. That way you can use it, reformat it, uh, put in your own language, put in your own statutes and hopefully have some uh, some some good results with it. Just you know, tell them to remove the stuff and hopefully they'll do it. Some of them will do it, some of them will not. And so uh, as I said, there are literally hundreds of different mugshot websites out there. I don't know all of them, I have not worked with all of them. I'm just showing you some, some tactics and techniques that we've used that have been successful for our firm. So I wanna explain what the letter itself looks like. Here it is. I'm gonna give you a copy of this, so don't write this stuff down, don't take screenshots. I'm gonna actually give you a copy of this letter, that way you can use it on your own. So here's what it looks like. Here's the demand letter. Okay, so this was one that I originally drafted back up on, looks like September 20th, you're gonna to wanna to update that date. You wanna put in all of the offending website information. So, you know, the name of the website, their mailing address, if you can find it, uh, and, and their email address. Most of them have this stuff listed on the bottom in their footer, or they have a contact page. Many of them also have a, a, a request for removal. You can go in there and find the information on your specific website. Then you're gonna to wanna to put in here uh, regarding, it's regarding the criminal justice record or the mugshot removal for you. You want to uh, actually link to it. So put the link in where you see it, on their website, link to it so they know exactly which one you're talking about. Then you're gonna get into the nuts of the actual letter. So you wanna, you don't know who you're writing to, to whom it may concern according to, so in Arizona, according to Arizona state law, our, our statute says that the criminal justice records may not be used by any person for the purpose of soliciting business for pecuniary gain. Okay, that's the exact statute that I read with you previously. So you're just gonna to wanna to find whatever statute you have in your home state and plug it in right there. So you're gonna pull the statute out and you're gonna say, "We, I know that you're in violation of this law. You wanna reference the law so that they know that you know what you're talking about. You can't just say, hey, uh, I, my mugshot's on your website, it makes me unhappy. Okay, so are thousands of other people. You're saying you know that they're in direct violation of state law, then we're gonna reference what the penalties are. So going back to the letter, the law states that criminal justice record includes a booking photograph, the name, and so on. That's all part of the actual statute. We're gonna go over and we're gonna continue the letter. Your company, the offending company, is hosting and publishing a record in violation of this law. You're gonna link again to the website. On this web page, we're also gonna attach a picture to the exhibit uh, as an exhibit. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. On this website, you're obviously seeking pe pe pecuniary gain. It's a hard word for me, as is evident from the numerous advertisements surrounding the person's mugshot and arrest information. So here's what ended up happening. So a lot of the mugshot websites were charging you to remove it, which is clearly illegal. So they can't say, give us $500, we'll take it down. That's a direct violation of the law. So many of these mugshot operators were then saying, Okay, well, if we don't charge for removal, because charging for removal is very explicitly prohibited in the law, maybe we'll just run ads. So now they're just gonna run advertisements right next to the mugshots and to the records. So they're still making money, but it's not as a direct way. So my argument, of course, is they're hosting this data only for the advertising revenue. It's not actually news, it's not actually valuable to anybody, but they have so many records and so many people are searching their names and going to their website that now they can advertise people. And many of them are advertising uh, background service removals. So you know, uh, Bin Verified, I think is one of them. All of these different companies are advertising on the website. So they're causing the problem and then they're trying to sell you the solution. So they're, they're hosting all of this stuff and they're saying, uh, now click our advertiser like a Bin Verified or one of these other companies who they may have partnerships with or whatever, but they're making money. So it is pecuniary gain there, they're making money. The other way I've seen these websites actually making money is they're for, for other companies. So they'll pull your mug shots, they'll host them like a bail bonds company, they'll, they'll host them on their website so that when you look for your loved one or when you look for yourself and it's on a bail bonds company website, they're hoping that you're gonna see that record and then call their office to have a consultation about 
securing uh, bonds through them, which of course is generating revenue. It's for pecuniary gain. And in my opinion, it's in total violation of the law. So those are the different ways that they actually make money. Uh, many of them are going to claim that they don't make money, but of course they do. If they're running ads, they're making money off of it. So that's what I explained here in this letter on this website. You're seeking pecuniary gain because you've got advertisements. Our state law, our state passed these laws to stop entities like yours from profiting off criminal arrest records. As you know, here are the penalties. Okay, we've already gone over that. I don't need to go into that too much, but it's a lot, right? $500 a day after the first 60 days is a big bill. So here's what we what we do to create some of that teeth, create some real strong incentives for them to remove this information off of the internet. It appears that your website, your webpage contained the information on our Maricopa County Sheriff's Office mugshot website, published it on or about January 1th. The, the, I changed the dates here. The dates don't match up, but I changed them just so we can protect our client, of course. But this is something that you can you can model. So just put in the correct dates. Find when you got it on there. It's probably when it when it went on the mugshot website. It's probably going to be right around the arrest date. Sometimes three or four or five, ten days after the arrest. Once the bots have scraped that data and put it on their website. So you just want to find out when that day was, so that you can go through and you can say at the time of this letter. It appears to have been published for over 67 days, subjecting you to at least $12,500 in liabilities for damages. So that's a pretty big bill. And 67 days is not that much. So if we let this go on and go on and go on, it's going to be very expensive for this for this company. And when they see that letter and they see that it, it came from our office, specifically from an attorney's office, that carries a lot of weight. They go, uh oh, these guys are obviously in this game. They know the law. Uh, they know how we work. They know who to send it to. They've tracked us down. We've identified some personal operators. So that becomes a scary letter, $12,500 in liabilities. Now, if you're sending this on your own, of course, I'm going to give you the template. If you're not a lawyer, it's probably not going to carry that same weight, but the facts don't change. It's still a very big bill to them. And you could always, of course, add in a line or add in a letter saying, uh, I've been I've been you know consulting with other attorneys to see what my options are regarding collecting this fee, regarding collecting, you know, fifty thousand dollars. It's a big, big bill. So in lieu of moving forward is the last paragraph. In lieu of moving forward with the claim against your company, but without waiving a potential claim, I respectfully request you immediately remove this record and let us know upon completion. So this is saying in lieu of moving forward, you could always say, if you don't remove it, uh, we are going to move forward. I think when I originally wrote this letter, I said, if you do not remove it, we are going to be in communication with our client regarding uh, her options for removing it. So if they did not remove it, we could go back to her and say, look, we sent them a, a letter. They didn't remove it. You're now collecting $27,000 down the line. And uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to file a lawsuit? You have to pay to come out of pocket to serve them with that. Do you want to you know, work with a civil lawyer? Just as a disclaimer, we don't do any civil law. Okay, We just don't do any uh, civil lawsuits. We, you know, of course, know how to do them. We just don't do them personally. right? This is something that I would refer out. We, we do criminal law. We want to be very good at criminal law. We want to live in this space. That's all that we do is criminal defense law. We help people with their records, their reputations, and of course, with their criminal charges. So th this is our wheelhouse. Now, if, if we got into a situation where we had a client who did want to go sue them, we would pass that off to a civil lawyer, somebody who works in multiple states, somebody who can really track down this stuff and be very good at that. So that's that's where we're at with that. I also want to just show you just how to kind of send it off. You want to, uh, you know, of course, put your name, put your contact information, everything that you need there uh, so that they know how to contact you back. And then finally, to kind of close it out, we want to attach a, a screenshot. So what I always do is I will take a screenshot of the actual record. So you know you would go to the web page and uh, just press print screen or use a screen capture tool like ShareX or there's a different one called LightShot. Both are great pieces of screenshot tool tools. And once you add that in there, you kind of have that memorialized. Okay, if you're if you're working. Uh, with a law firm, we, what we also do is actually save a copy of the website. So we have all the original HTML and all the original code. We want a, a direct kind of carbon copy of what we pulled down from their server. But we also take a screenshot because it's just easier to see. We can say we've, we've, note, we've, we've taken this screenshot on this day and it is part of our record now. So uh, that's sort of 
it for the letter. It's pretty simple. It's about two pages, three pages with the exhibit. You can draft that up. We put it, of course, on our letterhead and we send it all out uh, with a signature from an attorney. And we, we beef the letter up just a little bit and kind of you know expand on areas that are relevant for our clients. But of course, not all of that is going to be relevant for you. This is sort of the, the nuts and bolts, the, the bare basic minimum of a demand letter. And it's, as I said, it's drawing that line in the sand. We know on this day that you're in violation of the law. And these penalties are accruing on this day. So you can either take action or not. You can sit on your hands and just let this thing go. But the bill has already started and we're going to keep monitoring that. So it's a good way to, to sort of really create an understanding between you and this mugshot website operator that you know what you're talking about and you're going to be exploring your options if they are not cooperative. So when we sent this letter out, we actually had a good result. Uh, uh, and here's what we had on this one particular case. So I'm following through the same case. This one is a letter back from one of the mugshot providers. So again, don't need you to read it all, but I, I do want you to know that, you know, we've gotten responses on this. So I sent this one back in 2019. It's kind of funny. We use this software called uh, Copper and I can see how many times somebody opens up a piece of email. And if you look very closely, they opened this letter up 61 times. Okay, so I sent that letter, they opened it 61 times, which means uh, they were either very concerned about it or they forwarded this on, uh, along to a number of other different people, their legal team, every, who knows you know, how many people opened it, but they opened it 61 times. So the letter caught somebody's attention and uh, long story short, they, they did remove it. Uh, your client's information has been removed from our database this morning. And then they go through their policy. They said they talked to the, the, the sponsor of the bill, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they actually have a policy that they would already remove it after three months anyways, but they keep the arrest booking information for, uh, for a longer period of time. So mug shots go away, but your arrest booking information will stay on. So you can see here, it's kind of difficult. Some of these people have just, you know, blanket removal policies. Some of them have no removal policies. Some of them remove it immediately or only half of it or three months. So my point is, is that you kind of, you got to kind of play that whack-a-mole game. You got to go through and just kind of knock them out one at a time. Some of them have different, uh, different policies. Some of them have different levels of communication. So you just have to kind of know what you're doing. But it is a good place to start. So if you found one website that has your mugshot and you've got a law, a state law, sort of like Arizona's, you may have some success with this letter. And of course, we are going to give you a free removal demand letter. So I am going to link up that letter in the description and uh, you, can, you can download that at your leisure. I think it's a good resource for you to have and something certainly you can try without having to hire an attorney or any one of these other companies to go after some of these people for you. Okay, so we've talked about letters that get, uh, mugshots that get removed with time. We've talked about mugshots to get removed with, you've got a case dismissed or a seal or expungement or the records wiped clean, then you can go and ask that those be removed as well. We've also talked about sending a demand letter and we've seen an example where they responded back and said, yep, we pulled it off this morning. Here's our policy. We talked to the government, don't sue us. Uh, we're, we're, we're happy to pull it off for you. Also a very good result. So it works, but there are some websites out there that just won't remove it. They, they won't remove it. We've tried and their response to us has been to refer to that exception in the law, that subsection E that says that they are newspapers. This is how they get away with it. This is how they're claiming to get away with it. Now I know because I kind of live in this space. I know that there are lawsuits pending against a lot of these other mugshot operators uh, throughout the country. There are different people in different locations and they're all kind of coming under fire because this is a popular movement that we're seeing. People are, are getting really irritated by exploiting people who've already been through the system. You know, people who've been through the system, they've paid their debts, they've, uh, they've done their jail time or they paid their fines or they've done probation or whatever it is. And now they still have to deal with this stuff. And so uh, fortunately, a lot of the governments are, we're seeing some positive motion in, in this issue. But there still are those sites that just will not remove them. They're coming under litigation. I don't expect that they last too long, but we just don't know. We just don't know how much resources they have, what they're expending in these things, where, where they're getting their money from or how this works. And in the meantime, if you have a mugshot that you can't get removed and it's impacting your job, your life, your career, your family, your friends, whatever, you got to do something about it. So that's where we come to our final uh, tactic, our final tactic. And this one 
it doesn't really matter what they're doing. If you do it right, you can be successful. You don't have to rely on any of these other mugshot operators. You can do some of this on your own, or of course, if you want help with this, uh, I'll tell you about what we can do to help you at the end of this video. So as we continue to move forward, I wanna talk about what's called suppression, okay? We call it mugshot suppression. It's, it's a, a suppression campaign. And sort of to explain how this works, I wanna share a quote with you. And it says, the best place to hide a dead body is on the second page of Google. The best place to hide a dead body is on the second page of Google. And it's true because nobody ever goes to the second page. We don't click there, I never go there. Uh, I, I probably used to, but everything that I want is usually right on the first page of Google. And so the idea is if your mugshot and your bad records, your reputation is on the first page of Google or Bing or Yahoo or wherever you're seeing it, we want to suppress it. We want to knock it off. We want to send it to page 10 or, or knock it off the, the, any of the pages completely. We want to give Google more relevant information about you than a mugshot or than one of these scummy you know, disgusting website operators is providing. And so we can do that. Before I do that, I wanna share with you just how big of a drop off the second page is or any other page on Google other than page one. This data comes from a place called backlinko.com and they do a lot of search engine optimization, but here's what we've got. Basically, you can see here, Google on the first page has 10 positions. And so the number of clicks per the position, so position one, of course, is gonna get the by far the most. Even when you go to, to, to result two or three on the first page, it drops d dramatically, okay? This is called your click-through rate. This is you know, how many people are clicking on that, that link that's in the first position, a ton. That's why everybody's fighting for that. They all wanna be on position one in Google. When you go to two, three, four, it drops off. By the time you get down to eight, nine, and 10, the clicks are falling off dramatically, just not anywhere even in the same ballpark. It's like it's not even there, nobody even looks. Most people don't even scroll down. But when you get to page two, it's basically gone. So anything after about page uh, result 14, 15 is gone. So if you're looking on the second page, again, you're only looking kind of up at, at these first few. And then most people just go up, oh, it's not there, and, and they're gone. It doesn't change for the remainder of the pages, any other position. So this is just, this is this is basically, all of this is page two, all of this is page three, page four, page five, and so on. And so you can see here, it, it's just, it's, it's gone. If you're on the second page, it's basically gone. Nobody's going there, nobody's looking there. So more data looks like this. Number one result has the highest organic click-through rate. Again, we're looking at click-through rates, how many people are clicking on the different positions and they're all on the first page. So if you can knock off your mugshot from the first page, you're going to basically be, uh, it's basically gonna be gone, okay? When you, when you take those two charts and you summarize them, here's the data point that we get from Backlinko. Only 78% of Google searchers, I'm sorry, 0.78% of Google searchers clicked on something from the second page. That's less than 1%. Less than 1% of all searches this is not my data, this is Backlinko, but it's verified by other uh, search engine optimization data providers, SEMrush, Moz, uh, all of these different websites will tell you, basically anything on the second page is, is dead. So if you have a business and you're on the second page, you're not even, you're not even in the game. You're in 0.78% of the game, not even 1% of the game. So the idea is that we want to not manipulate or alter the search of Google. That's against their terms of service. You can't do any of that. But what you can do is you can provide them with more relevant information about you, about your life, about the things that you're doing that Google values. It's more, you know, it's more relevant to them. Google makes its money by being the search provider that provides the most relevant data. If you search for uh, how to get better at basketball, you're gonna get really good results. If they, if they showed you an ad or a page about how to get better at football, you'd say Google's terrible and you'd go somewhere else. So the idea is that you want to give them good information about you so that it, it outranks, it does better, it provides more value to Google's user than your mugshot does. So practically, let's take a look at how that works. So when we sort of break this down on a search engine optimization standpoint, so SEO search engine optimization is how do we, how do we create data, create, assets or, or online material that Google likes. So here's an example of a bad result. So when we type your name here and you search it, 
you're going to see this image bar, right? You're going to see Google come back with all these different images. You may have a good picture of yourself from Facebook. You may have a picture of somebody else with a similar name who's not relevant at all. Maybe another picture of you from Twitter. Again, somebody else who's you know not relevant or it could be a picture of a business or something. Then you've got your mugshot. And this is what we want to deal with. We want to get rid of that. So you've got more, you know, got search results about you. Maybe this links over to your, you know, to a, a LinkedIn profile. And this goes about somebody else. This is just information that's not relevant about you. So obviously that's not good. That's what we want to make go away. When you type your name in there and that red mugshot comes up, we want to make that go away. And so the idea is, is that by, by providing, by doing some things, by engaging in this suppression campaign, we end up with a result that looks more like this, where it's all good pictures of you. Everything that we see here is good. More, these are search results about you, more details about you. This is your bio. This is your resume. This is your charitable work. This is your, uh, you know, social organizations that you're a part of all of this. We want to be good. We want it to be very, very good. And there's a way that we do that. So let me show you how that works. It's not super complicated. It actually is quite complicated. Google has, uh, I think, thousands of algorithm changes every year. And so there are, there are entire billion and billion dollar industries that are set up to monitor how this all works and to you know, adjust these different results or, or to influence these results. It's called search engine optimization. And there are entire companies that do it. We, we do it for our firm. We do it for uh, a lot of businesses do it, but it, it, it's very valuable. So here's how that works. So let's take a look at the Google bot. So Google has bots. They have different uh, algorithms, different pieces of software that, that just scour the internet. That's all they do. They go around, they scan a website and they look on the website and they identify any links on that website. And then they follow those links and then they scan that website. And then that website has different links and they follow that website. And so they just keep crawling and crawling and crawling until they gather all the data and organize it. So in this situation, we've got one person, we'll call it this guy right here, because this is one of the only mugshots I could find on the internet that didn't have any names or anything like that. This was a stock photo. This guy was not actually a prisoner of the Chicago Police Department. So I'm using his mugshot. It was on a stock photo website and he, he gets arrested. So he's got his mugshot out there. Google is only seeing you know Facebook because he's got a Facebook profile and they're only seeing the mugshot website because that's all this guy has on the internet about him. There's a lot more obviously to his life. He probably has a job and a family and you know all these other things he can talk about, but his online profiles, online presence is low in a way that Google doesn't know what to find about the guy. So when somebody searches for him, the only thing that Google has seen on the internet is his Facebook page and his mugshot. Obviously not ideal. So when anybody goes to Google and types that in, all that's gonna come up. So how do we deal with that? It's called suppression. We want to suppress that mugshot and the way that looks in terms of, uh, of a diagram looks more like this. So we take Google and Google is still out there. They're still crawling around They're They're looking for all these different websites, but now we've built out a number of different things. So now we have this arrestee. Uh, this is a separate uh, photo and it's, it's, it's a good looking photo. It's professional, right? He's working. He's, he's hard at work. This is something that we want the public to see. This is something that is valuable to Google. And there are different things we can do on these images. We can, uh, you know, adjust some alt tags and, and, um, uh, some, some detailed meta descriptions and stuff like that in the SEO of this particular image and on this website. But we also want to create what we also call online assets. So these are different assets, charity work, LinkedIn profiles, social media profiles, uh, resumes, a personal branded website, all of these different things. We can build out each one of these different profiles and make sure that they're all interconnected so we can connect them to one another. I probably should have had some, some diagrams here or some uh, arrows connect all of these together so that when Google puts in somebody searches on their website, John Doe, we're going to see all of this and the mugshot because it's less relevant. It's just not important. Nobody cares about that. It doesn't give the viewer, the searcher, the person who wants this information, any valuable data about this person. The, the actual value, valuable data is it's, it's the mitigation. It's what this person does on a day to day basis, what they volunteer, you know, what their role is with their church, what their career looks like, what they're doing with their future plans. We want to talk about their social profiles. And so we want to build out all of these online assets in a way that's going to suppress the mugshot. So this is a, a very, very highly overly simplified uh, explanation of 
image SEO and website SEO and search engine, it, all, all sorts of different details go into how this works. But the point is, if you give Google more valuable data, if you tell them more about your life in a way that is, is going to help them deliver information to the people who are searching for it, this stuff is going to rank higher. It's going to be more valuable. So it's going to be closer to the position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten than your mugshot would be. And so the mugshot's then going to go off onto the second page or the tenth page because Google's going to see this is not relevant. So we've worked with some people in the past on these types of things. People with really big built out online profiles, they don't need a whole lot of help. We go through and we clear up their records from uh, from from a criminal legal standpoint and you know some other areas, but they've got a huge online profile, uh, tons of assets all over the place, so they don't need it as much. Other people they do because they just they, they don't have anything to talk about. And so a couple things that that you can do to help right? One, you can wait on it. You can see if it's just going to go away on its own. If your mugshot is on the internet, there may be a possibility that it just goes away. So this is the recap. So if it's on there and you're just waiting it out, time may be all you need. So just be patient. Those mugshots may just go away. If your case does get dismissed, they will probably take it down. Okay. Most of the people that I've spoken with, they'll take it down. They've got policies that say if it's been sealed or expunged, or it's been dismissed, they'll remove it. Now, most criminal cases, they don't go that way. They, they, they don't get dismissed, okay, just by a numbers game. But most of them are resolved, successfully reduced down, or negotiated into a better deal. But if you're in one of those positions where you don't have a sealed case or a dismissed case, then what are you supposed to do? Well, you can send a demand letter. And as I said, I'm going to give you a copy of the one that we've used uh, in the past with success. So you can download that and use it on your own, of course, you're going to want to modify it. It's not a one size fits all letter. You can't just print it and send it. So you're going to want to go in there, rewatch the part of the video where I explain how to fill it out. And there's some comments and some different things in that actual uh, template that you can use. And if that doesn't work, meaning you send a letter over to them and they still say, we're not going to remove it. We're not going to do anything about it. Of course, you're going to have to go the suppression route. So build out your online presence, social profiles, build out a personal website, a uh, personal brand, a resume website, a charitable website, uh, you know, lots of images, go get new photos taken and really create an online presence that's that's uh, one to be contended with so that you can push those mugshots off to the last page. Now, of course, if you need any help with that, we can certainly do that. Okay, we are used to sort of playing against, the, you know, all of these different uh, people, number of different, uh, you know, uh, in criminal defense law, it's kind of, it feels like a lot of the times it's, it's, it's one David versus Goliath, right? We're dealing with the government. We're dealing with prosecutors and judges and an entire system that's sort of built to uh, squash the little guy. So we're, we're used to these types of things and, and we can certainly help you through it. Let me tell you a little bit about what we can do. So first and foremost, we do a reputation audit. We want to see what you have out there, what is on the internet, crawl all the search engines. We do a, we, we, we use some tools here that we can do what's called a, a personal brand sort of competition analysis. So what we can do is put your name in there, put some of your brands, you know, if you've got a company, put your name or your brand or your company name in there, and we can see what the competition looks like. So who is competing with you? If it's a personal name, the competition is going to be the mugshot website. So we can actually plug your name in and we can see what the internet is seeing in different locations, in different countries, with different crawlers and all sorts of different things. So we want to see what is out there. And then we want to do what's called a, a TF IDF analysis. So basically what this means is that we're looking at the search frequency, that the, the, the term frequency in particular websites and web pages so that we can help yours outrank the mugshot websites. So it's complicated. It's a fancy word, but basically what we're doing is doing a content analysis. So we're seeing what's on the mugshot websites. Then we're going to, we're going to see what we need to do in order to outrank them. And so we can do that on a number of different, uh, in a number of different areas, but in a way that's going to boost up the positive results and suppress down the negative results. Then once we know what the landscape looks like, what kind of context we're in, we can start the suppression campaign. So we got a removal and a suppression campaign. We've got uh, relationships with a lot of data providers. So we can uh, remove you from six of these main directories, some of the big boys. We want to remove you from 44 of the data providers. So, so other providers like Bin Verified, PeopleWise, there's 44 of them. So I didn't list them all out here. What we'll also send out demand letters 
on your behalf to all of the mugshot website providers. Um, even if they're out of state, we can send them a demand letter and say they're in violation of Arizona law if it's an Arizona case. And that's a that's a big problem. So now we want to tell them that the, basically they're on the hook. The clock has started ticking. The fees are going to be accumulating and they can remove them or not. So we've got some data providers that we are integrated with that will remove them quickly. We've got some other ones that require some work, some demand letters and things like that. And then of course, if there are some of those really difficult ones, some of the ones that are difficult to troubleshoot that won't remove with a demand letter, that don't remove automatically, that don't remove with sealed or expunged cases, we gotta do the suppression campaign, okay? It's a six month suppression campaign. What my team does, and we do this all here you know, in our office, is we build out all of those different assets that I was talking about. And we're not just gonna go and start throwing up websites. We wanna do a, a targeted analysis. We wanna say, here's what we're seeing in the search results. Here's what it's gonna to take to sort of bump that off of the front page so we can improve your reputation across the board. Then as we're building out all of these different assets, and of course we're interviewing you and we're talking with you and explaining you know, how this is all gonna work, but also understanding what's going on in your life so that everything that we're putting on the internet is good, it's positive, and you're gonna be happy with it. We don't wanna just throw a bunch of spammy content up there. We want it to be valuable for you. All of this should help you in other areas of your life, whether you're applying for job, applying for work, whether you've already got an existing business that you just wanna give it a little bit of an online facelift, all of this stuff is very valuable. We do it for our business. I do it for myself personally. It's how I learn how to do all this stuff. But it is it is very important. Now, it's also something that at the end of that six months, we're going to give everything over to you. So we're going to give you all of those assets. You can continue to hold on to them, manage them, do whatever you want with them, close them down if you want. If you shut them all down, your mugshot may come back up because it's not being suppressed anymore. But the point is you have all of that. So you can just keep it, hang on to it. Uh, you know, if you want to give it over to a web developer or, you know, hire an intern to help you, you know, kind of create some of this stuff for your business. Anyways, lots of opportunities. I could talk a lot about how all this stuff works. I geek out over it. Uh, too much, but it's good. It's valuable. And it's really helpful in helping people restore their reputation and restore their records. So that's what we offer. If you do want to give us a call, I've got, we offer free case evaluation. So I'm going to share that with you here in the last slide. Phone numbers, of course, are in the description. Give us a call. We'll talk you through it. We'll say, we've got experience with this, or we don't have experience with that, or here's what our thoughts are on how this is going to all go away. If you don't want to work with us, if you don't want to hire us, if you don't have any interest in, in actually, uh, you know, using anybody to do any of the stuff for you want to do it on your own great let me tell you about a couple other things that we have while i've got you here so i wrote a book it's called beginning to winning you can go to beginning to winning.com it's also available on amazon we host a live show once a week it's called watching the watchers we have a facebook group but you also should be subscribing here we simulcast on facebook on twitter and on uh youtube so you can see us here this is on my wall these are all of the different bad popo that we have. Bad police officers all committing crimes or breaking the law. Bad prosecutor over here got reprimanded. So we talk about that on the show. It's a lot of fun. It's a live show. I usually have interviews with some pretty cool people. So would love to have you check that out as well. And then, of course, if you want, you can certainly give our office a call. So free case evaluations. There is the number right there. Our website's rrlawaz.com. That is our phone number. Call for a free case evaluation, literally. I mean, if you have any questions about this video or about how any of this works, give us a call. We'll see what we can do to help. If it makes sense for us to work together, we can discuss some of those options. If it doesn't, no problem at all. Hopefully, this was all very helpful. There is the link to the free demand letter form. Uh, wherever you're watching this video, we're going to link that there. So download that and good luck getting your records removed. If you do need any help, we'll be here. If you have any other questions, Leave them in the comments section below and we'll get those answered. So again, my name is Robert Gruler, a criminal defense attorney with the r, r Law Group in Scottsdale, Arizona. I really want to wish you the best of luck. I hope you're able to get all this stuff taken care of. Hopefully I don't have to hear from you, but if you do want to give us a call, we'll be here. So once again, thanks for watching. Until the next one, take care.